Welcome to the first episode of Bro Taste This. I am, of course, Luis Pablo, joined as always with Juan Legend and Jay Motherfucking May. This first episode, we talk about how we met each other, some of the stories that we had in our first restaurant jobs, some political issues, some weekly topics, and of course, my digestive issues that will never end. So, thank you for joining us. What's the name of this one? I'm on Shackle. Oh, nice. Shackle, can I get Where's it from? Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucked up, man, when you think about it. And okay. <laughs> it's made by the prisoner. Bro, you gotta keep that in here. <laughs> yeah. See? Guys, these are the times. I'm pretty that sure we were recording. We, we are recording. We're recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it's literally made by the prisoner. <laughs> Dude, we're from California. <laughs> it's from California. What, what made you think come up? What made you think that made them come up with that name? It's probably I don't know. Probably <laughs> what made me <laughs> come up? With that? Yeah, it was just, I didn't come up with that name. Clearly, <laughs> clearly a slave owner. Who was like, you know, it'd be really funny. A plantation owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freedom. Oh, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Freedom is a state of mind. No, oh, some this some bullshit. <laughs> this <laughs> He's like, you're free already, boy. Ooh. State of mind or law. Well, you know the Confederate flag is because uh, because of state rights and nothing else. I took a really big sip. That's a big one. <sighs> That's fine. All right, let me just check the audio. Oh. Yeah, that's how I determine what wine to buy now. Like, I look it up on that app, and if it's not about 4.0, I don't... I don't yeah, buy. you don't fuck with that? Damn, that. that's a great, great oh resource for that reason alone. Yeah. It's because you don't know. Yeah, you know, right. You try something new all the time, but it's like... There's like... pay 26, 30 plus no, dollars. No point. You like, know, you yeah. want to get something that's quality. Yeah. It's spicy. It is. Good point. That's a good like way to describe kinda, it. It's like fruity and spicy really at cool. the same time. Mm-hmm. Like a... Like fruity. a rojo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah, a rojo. Jesus. Fruity, spicy... Like Spanish. And juicy all at the same time. Kind of like a good yeah. wine. Yeah. That is true. I am pretty fruity and spicy. Yeah. Damn, Damn, that was a whole bottle. And oh, the Prisoner Wine Company. I it's told the you same guys. one that's that one. Yeah, I told you guys. Yeah, that's a Prisoner. Where'd you get that print? I stole it. From Cafe. The... The... the that portrait, yeah, I stole it from Cafe. Okay, that's like, that story. And she's like, I think we're tossing this. And I was like, no, you're not. Oh, okay. When you said stole it, I thought you took it off the wall. Because oh, it was on the wall. Yeah, I literally, I literally thought you took it off it the wall. It was on the wall by something. the computer by the bar. So it was like on that back one. Oh, I do remember it. And then she's like, oh, I'm trying to get rid of this. And I was like, I'll take it. And she's like, all right. So I just took it off your hands. That is so but look how nice it looks. Like it's black and white. Yeah. And it's, you know? It's beautiful. I have no idea what the story contains about it. Going. But I just know he was like a prisoner and they're like, hey, we're going to make a wine of you. And he's like, can I get my freedom? They're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to make a wine. <laughs> Use you for some marketing. Yeah. Dude, in, in like 40 years, people are really going to enjoy this. In 40 years, people are really going to enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, all right, I guess that's fine with me. All right, w- man. Wine's interesting. Wine is interesting. Just because it's subjective. Like, it's not even the fact that it tastes better yeah. or that it was made differently, but it's like the name. The name can make like thousands and thousands of dollars difference on the bottle. Oh, yeah, that's so true. Like, all the marketing and perception. It's like how like people come to prestige, you know? the prestige yeah. winery, like their their wine just costs way more, even though yeah. it's yeah. it's not much better. It's yeah. how people feel about Caymans. Like as soon as they see it on the menu, they're like, "Yeah, I'll get one of those." Yeah, for like no reason at all. Yeah, it's not even that great of a cab. The times I've had Caymans, I've always been unimpressed. Yeah, maybe it's because I'm expecting it to like change my mind about Cabernets, but at the same time, it's kind of like uh, I don't like this is better. Yeah, I was gonna say this is a fucking good cab. 
It's a really good cab. I, I yeah. honestly, I think at the price point, that this is a must buy. Yeah, twenty six dollars. Twenty six. Oh, seriously. Mm -hmm. This is like something you want to enjoy with like people who know wine. Yeah. I uh, I only go to that shop then the cheese and wine. Um, Geneva, the bottle shop. No, no, no. It's called it's cheese like and wine. Richmond. Cheese and wine factory in Richmond. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, and the guy selects the wine himself, so he only buys what he like likes to drink. Oh, so, okay. So everything's like priced like weird if he has a weird special or it has like things that he likes. So Dude, aren't, aren't those cheese and wine factories like ginormous? No, no, no. no. It's, 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 it's not, or, <laughs> no, no, no. It's not fact. It's cheese house. Cheese and wine that's, house. Yeah. That, sorry, that's what, it, that's what I meant. Like, yeah. usually those stores is like they're right off the highway and they're pretty big. No? That's what, yeah. This that, one is it's, it's not that big, but the guy says he picks out his inventory personally. Yeah. This might be privately owned. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure they do like yeah. wine tastings there too. And yeah. they have like weird specials sometimes where it'd be like, you buy six, you get like, it you give you like a whole case, like type stuff. Like, I don't know, he has weird specials with them. Yeah. I was one there. Oh, it is good though. We need more places like that. Cause every time, have you been to the wine shop in Lake Geneva? Um, the bottle oh, shop downtown. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I've been there. But and when you walk in there, kind of like, what is this? Yeah, it just yeah. feels like a very marketed liquor store that happened to have wine. Overpriced, too. Yeah. I was looking up, to. I could I could find the same bottle of wine, like, $8 cheap or something. Yeah. It's like not. It's kind of the, the convenience of it being an LG, you know. Or in the fair that's downtown. And downtown. And I think you can drink there, no? Yeah, you can drink. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can buy the bottle. You can buy the bottle and go outside. You know what? I changed my mind. About this <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I low, I low key did I low key kind of like that on there. I low really? key kind of and you, they sell cheese. Mm -hmm. well, for me, it means nothing. But <laughs> I get oh, true. There. But like crackers and sauces yeah, and shit like that. That's kind of okay. cool. Let's see a few lactate pills. Yeah, I got lactate pills on me always. There's someone on the table there, and I really enjoy having wine with cheese but it's like at what cost <laughs> <laughs> like when you have alcohol it already kind of ruins my insides yeah. and you add cheese to it yeah. like those desserts at auto made the other day i have like three or four bars yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't want red white coming in and red white coming in you know? <laughs> it was like i just blended everything i ate in the last two days and it's pushing out of me but <laughs> it's good man that's the problem yeah, that mascarpone dessert that she made the other day. Just, you phenomenal. just demolished Dude, it. Dude, and like my life is like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> like, I can't keep up. Like, <laughs> I ate two. Of, yeah, what are you doing I, to me? <laughs> I ate like two lactate and I had like four of those bars. Like, what was the point? I might as well have no lactate. That was enough even <laughs> 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 I sent to like a couple of high school players against the fucking NBA team. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not yeah, dude, honestly, Mars Capone is the NBA of dairy. Oh, for sure. I got a block of brie in the fridge if you guys want some. No. I'm good. <laughs> for that honestly would have been good. Yeah, it would have been good, It's still up there. I can go grab it. Yeah. Maybe not. All right, let's, uh, let's dive into some news that I wanted to bring up to get your guys' opinion. Uh, the NFL comes back this week. Oh, I fucking love that. No one is going to get us to see another season of NFL. What's different? See, should I, I be you excited? Could, you could say that about any sport. I mean, hey, okay, you can't say it about soccer Why because not? everybody. You might have to scoot in one. Okay, I, I was gonna say I'll, I'll make this like short. Sell the NFL to me. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll make this like lame kind of pitch to it for that, this season that I see like some parallel strings with the NFL and like some of the older superstars okay. um, specifically Tom Brady and uh, the fact that he's quite literally won seven championships like before Tom Brady uh, the like Jordans of the NFL uh, were Terry Bradshaw and Joe Montana who had both won four and he's won seven he's won seven, seven. so he's like Taken for granted on a level. <laughs> he's taken for granted on a level that like, like he's such a pretty golden boy that the media kind of loves to hate him and use him as a villain. But well, like it... us as a common fan, taken for granted on a level that we don't really even understand until he retires. Like he oh, is literally for sure, for sure. going for number eight. He's gonna double the golden the boys second of, most of the NFL before him. He's gonna double them. You see, that's the way I feel about him though. It's like, why would I? 
care about the he's, NFL because he's moved on to a different team. Yeah, that's impressive. The, the, at, that at, season, they won it in their first season, and, yeah, and they was, won it at, in uh, the hometown where they played the Super Bowl as well. Yeah, isn't that like the first time ever that's that the they win that in the, the, the home team won? Yep, Tampa. Yeah, see, that's impressive. But this season, I'm like, okay, Aaron Rodgers gets one more year. And then he's, I he's I think the honestly right off, I think the right. the Packers and yeah. um, the Bears are kind of interesting on the surface teams, but they're gonna I don't know they're kind of they are who they thought they were like right. the Bears are gonna unravel before the end of the season and the Packers are gonna make it to the NFC Championship and not not, I'm not do anything not go on beef. Beyond that, yeah. I I like football, and I feel like it was a younger, but at a casual level, or yeah, I, I feel like at a casual level, I feel like I feel like the most exciting to me about football, honestly, is fantasy football. Like I, I'm not into fantasy football, but, which but is like, I think you should because it's like it's, it's the really, most well well it's like well organized fantasy league that I've ever done. Well, like, it's also based on me, stats because the stats just make why. sense. The stats make sense. Like yeah. yards, ten yards is a wide receiver, that's a point. Football is so yeah. like soccer, it's like no, you can't no. it's a big mesh of things going oh, on and you yeah, can't yeah. you can't like you can't grade it. You, you, you can't grade it, right, right. But um, football it's, it's like the play starts. If you, you get ten yards, this, this, therefore you're gonna make hit ten points, you, you make a touchdown of sixty po- or ten uh, no. six points. Right. That's yeah. the only way I'd get into football. And if I was doing fantasy. It's then fun. it's like then I would have to really Dude, I, fantasy. It's fun. I I think it would have been a different story too if you guys would have ever like played like flag football or some shit. I, I used to yeah, play that was younger. that was my thing too. Like I've never played yeah. football competitively. Yeah. So to me it's like I don't yeah. And that's the thing about other sports, like I really like basketball. Because I enjoy playing it. I really like soccer. Because I enjoy playing it. I like watching tennis. Like, I get into the tennis. But I couldn't tell you who's, like, coming up. I can just, like, see the yeah. tournament and be like, yeah. all right, like, the U.S. Open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the problem with NFL for me. And it's like, I don't feel like they're doing enough things different that, like, this year Messi left Barcelona. Ronaldo left Juventus. Like, the transfer market in soccer was, like, the craziest it's ever been. So this upcoming season, it's like Jesus Christ. Like, well, if if you're talking like that, like, um, are there moves like yeah, that in NFL? Like, for yeah. example, all the time. Like all the time, yes. But this season, for example, this season there was five first round quarterbacks, like in the draft. In the draft, um, okay, so that's a long time. So that's like five teams that are literally going through a, um, a, a quarterback rebuild, yeah. and they're literally throwing out on um, like. Uh, t- the t- new talented like golden boy of their of this era, you know, mm-hmm. like that's five teams at once doing that, including the Patriots, Cam Newton, who right? just let go of Cam Newton. Who yeah, was, like, I did hear about that. Just like who I heard is really good. Yeah, who yeah, he dresses he, like Harriet Tubman apparently, <laughs> <laughs> which is which yeah. is kind of my favorite part. Of it. And the other thing I want to ask, is kind of, I, I love the I love I love the meme. Where they put him next to one of the other starting quarterbacks that's this really fat. Oh, guy. that's and that's the dude who beat him, bro. And he's just Jack. That's the dude who beat him. Yeah, for his spot. Mac Jones. Mac. That's like yeah. He's just this like flubby dad bod, like like kind of front of the class white boy, you know, yeah. like a little yeah. lunch pill. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lunch pill. You know, a real gym <laughs> rat, you know. That just goes. To you show. know what, Jim? He's a real go getter yeah. when he's on the. Field. <laughs> that just goes to show hard work will never get you where you want to be. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> how how many games into the season until people start protesting about any number of things before people start complaining again? Because I'm thinking like five. Complaining about what? what? I don't kneeling, know. Kneeling, you know, kneeling during the national anthem. I, feel I don't like, know, man. I think I think week one it's gonna be. You know what? Fuck it. I feel like that's gone. Is it? Yeah, I feel like they kind of stamped it out. Real in hard. the Premier League, they're doing it every game still. Like right before the yeah. whistle blows, and I mean, the, and oh, and the I know England has its like own racial issues, but the, the NFL, we've had a few more recently. <laughs> I feel like they're over it at this is point. It, is it the, like, the NFL's owners like have like this? fucking iron grip on the league That's dude true. where they can blackball players at like a, a just a phone call away yes. and they do that on a regular basis and they did that to like two or three superstars um, that, that took Colin Kaepernick's side so so like threatening them? Is no they, they they blackballed them they like stopped hiring them on, on in the really? NFL really? yeah 
Well, good thing Colin Kaepernick got that Nike deal. So. Yeah, <laughs> other than other than Colin, there yeah. was like a few other like really significant like really good players that um, yeah, followed or like did this. Like, and then they after like one more team, they were like, "You're done. Like you're too you're too much of a liability." So like the players see that and they're like, "Nope, we're we're good boys, Colin." <laughs> I will put my hand on my heart. And I will sing the Oh, answer. say again, <laughs> you say. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I I think those issues are just are just something that's so like simply just miscommunication. <laughs> Like just not saying your side of the story the right way. Like, I would agree. I think it's like no, that. No, I don't no, think no, it's I the. Don't I don't. Completely. I don't know if it's the issue at hand completely. I think it's more of like just communicating and what they're trying to communicate. You know, they just they're Honestly, the other person's bro, brain just can't understand. The, the dude communicated it pretty fucking clearly. He was like, Governor? "Yeah, I have this Navy SEAL friend who told me to kneel because that's more respectful. So I'm gonna kneel for like the victims of police brutality." Yeah. And then, but then what's the other person's <laughs> response? Exactly. They're like they they think he. America, love it or leave it. Exactly. They think they think they're they're disrespecting the other side. No, they're fucking retards. But, but that's, that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. Miscommunication. They're not understanding. But I feel like that's not a miscommunication. That's, that's a, a lack. I don't want to fucking mm-hmm. understand. That's you. a lack. Right, but there's a way. There's if. There has to be a way that they would understand, you know what I mean? There has to be. But I think there like, has to be. I think there's like a... You know what I mean? I think... Well, yeah. The, you don't think it's someone's benefit of that, but there has to be a way to get like... Not not to get your point across, but, like, think it's yeah, right, but I think there's probably why you're doing there it. Probably it has to... There probably can be, but like living in the media universe, what we do... Right, where like, you only hear the... Where like clicks, art, or money, and, yeah. and uh, you know, like they have the profit incentive, they're... They're not in it to fucking like tell the real side. Like yeah. trying to get clicks, trying to get clicks, they're trying to make money. Like, and, like, the, like, like these media institutions were basically dead five years ago. Like, yeah. The all these like um, big New York Times, Washington Post, <laughs> Washington Post got bought off by Bezos for a reason because they were about to fucking die. Yeah. Like all these writers' rooms were all gonna fucking close. So then, like, Facebook ads basically came in here and was, like, yeah. save their fucking life. And they're, like, they're trying, trying to get as many clicks as possible any way you can. Okay. Yeah, you said five years ago, and that like, kind of does add up in my head of, like, that when was, did you first start seeing, like, click share and all and this, like, the, uh, And, like, these angry headlines aren't even picked up by the writers, bro. They're, or, like, these uh, provocative headlines mm-hmm. are not picked up by writers. They're, like... A lot of the it's times, like it's like separate team, this, it? there's this like I would guess. a mix of algorithms and editors that are like, what's gonna right. attract the most eyes and piss off the most people? Yeah, like what's gonna get people to share? So like, well, you're probably right. Like you gotta give people the benefit of the doubt because like at the end of the day, people kind of want to live happily, like in peace. And, like, yeah, right. You know, like, like, yeah, mm-hmm. not be not right. And at the end of the day, that's kind of. He's like, I won't be able to go outside without, like, driving across the street yeah. with, like, my asshole up my throat because I saw a cop, you know? Yeah. Like, like he's kind of saying the same thing, but, like... So, so in, in that in that case with the media, do you think the media should be somewhat controlled? Somewhat, um, not controlled completely, but, like, you know, regulated a little bit better? Do you think that's that should be a thing? Or do you I think, think it's gotten a little better. I, I had I had heard that like the media used to have like um, pre Ronald Reagan, uh, they used to have um, a rule or some shit where you had to present things like almost like a both sides shit, right? Yeah. Like, and while on the surface, I almost kind of disagree with that. Like it kind of seems like I don't know. Have y'all ever stumbled upon like? talk show YouTube of like the 1960s yes. or anything like that? Not 1960s. But just like old school 1950s. I've seen clips of like, like, like Carson and whatnot. Yeah, just like, I don't know. I feel like the fucking conversations on talk shows, like, I don't know, who do they have? Did you spill? Oh, that's not that bad. They had this, I remember on this one particular show, they had Carl Sagan. Like Sam. Who's Carl Sagan? You don't know who Carl Sagan is? Not top of my head. He's like the new, like the much more serious Neil deGrasse Tyson of his era. Oh, really? He he taught at at like Stanford. Mm-hmm. He had like 
three doctorates or some ridiculous amount or something like yeah. that. He was like a real, like just astrophysicist and like that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, he did the talk show circuit on a regular basis, talk politics mm -hmm. and all that shit. And like there, there's, um, there's just like this bounty of characters like that yeah. that that are totally fucking missing, like from like modern People American just, landscape. Like, actually, well, I think you only get that now from a podcast. You that's don't true. actually. That's get a good point. You, that's a good but point. Then maybe the medium has just changed. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the biggest that's difference. Is like you do get people that are kind of quote deep, unquote right? both sides. Mm -hmm. But you do get them, you have to kind of like reach out for it, like on NPR or like I said, on a podcast. Because as much as, I mean, lately you can say whatever you want, but like Rogan for a while was that person who would have on people that were technically both sides, not really like, yeah. you would have people that were super right wing and super left wing. I mean, he had Bernie Sanders on and yeah. So it's like you kind of get, but like I said, you only get that on podcasts. But you would need to know what podcast to get it from. Yeah, you need to be like, hey, this is the podcast I listen to. Mm -hmm. But unless you you know which podcast, then you're kind of yeah, because because I I I'll even notice that for myself. Like I'll only digest a certain media group or a certain political side, right? And then I'm like, I need to go out and look. That's yeah, and I don't even like watching news just because I feel like it's so one sided. I don't know, I don't yeah. know what to watch. You don't know how to, like, I don't know how to it. I don't, I don't know. I just don't, yeah, not important just... enough. Like, I would love, I've always said this, I would love a show where a guy just brings a big whiteboard, brings <laughs> someone who's like on this side and this side, and digest both their points yeah. and then try to find common, like, just yeah. take the time to find the common ground between, between them. Like, no arguing, but just like common ground like right. where are you right where do i feel like i'm not getting what i want yeah you know just try to understand each other i feel like that would just be like a great new segment for people that are like you know what i mean that are just well it would be but it's just unless you have people who want to be informed but no one wants to be informed people just want to be i feel like people want to be people informed, want to be informed but like like what i was saying with like the media bro there's mm -hmm. no the profit isn't in informing people right. the profit no. isn't keeping you it's kind of buy either angry or scared. Right. It's entertainment. Right. It's, it's like entertainment, it's, infotainment, it's one, yeah. literally. It's making non profit then. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you know, it, make it that new that is what that NPR is? Um yeah. NPR yeah, that is what NPR is. Yeah. And that is what the BBC is too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like um so like other countries do have that. Mm -hmm. Um actually funny enough you say that mm -hmm. where where you It's just news. Like Fox News is illegal in half the world, bro. Because they exaggerate so fucking much. Fox News is... Elite. You're telling me Barack Obama isn't from Africa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that not true? Oh, man. Well, I guess uh, we have to change channels. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's move the topic to a great movie that I saw this last weekend that no one gives a shit about called Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh, I heard Marvel's was, new movie. I was gonna say I heard that was a Marvel thing or it's, something. It's yeah. a new movie. It's fantastic. I couldn't recommend it enough. Is is it true that uh who, who owns Marvel at the moment? Disney owns Marvel. Okay. And has owned Marvel. Who has the rights for for that for that uh that section of it, like that superhero? Disney. Disney. Like Disney own everything that Marvel makes. Okay. Okay. There's like certain movie rights that like Sony owns Spider Man. Up until just recently, Fox owned the X Men and Fantastic Four. Okay. However, they ended up being bought by Disney also, so it's not like who cares. So the only th actual property that Disney don't fully own is Spider Man, but even then, he's appearing in movies. Disney movies yeah. now, so it's not like it really matters because right? <laughs> Disney are going to buy everything. So it's like, all right, you know, that, that works out. We'll get to you eventually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get him. Um, anyways, great movie. Highly recommend it. The martial arts are fantastic. Simu Lee, I believe is the main actor's name, does a great job. And uh, Aquafina plays like the main female lead and she's hilarious. There's a girl named Aquafina. I guess so. Yes. She was so. in uh, Crazy Rich Asians, a movie that, that a about movie. Crazy Rich Asians. It was a good movie. Okay. So she's yeah. kind of like the funny girl in that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about, the gay one? I don't know, <laughs> but they think she could be. <laughs> Speaking of movie stars, <laughs> The Rock recently said he is going to run for president if Shut people want him to. Up. 
The Rock has stated, <laughs> Shut the I do fuck have up. a goal to unite our country, and I also feel that it is what the people want and that I will do that. Oh, Johnson no. said when asked about his presidential ambitions in an interview broadcast on the Today Show on Monday. See, you see, this is, this is the issue right here. <laughs> so, get back to media. <laughs> yes. Get back to media. Because yes. media. media can make these type of things. Oh my God, which yes. Is, which is horrific. Which yes. Is horrific. Because, That's what I'm saying. Why would, because why? just because you're a nice guy, a good person, a good actor. Like, dude, just, Donald Trump was likable before he started. Yeah, just because you're likable doesn't mean you deserve to be president. Yes. You need oh to have attributes. God. Like, this needs to be a job title where there is, hey, this person needs to have, be able to do this, this. Dude, this, this Angela Merkel in Germany so has like a doctorate in astrophysics. Who? The prime minister. You know Angela Merkel? No. He said the prime minister of who? The prime minister. Hungry? Oh, the prime minister of Germany for yes. the last 10, 12 yeah. years or something. Yes. Yeah, she right. literally had a doctorate or two in astrophysics. Like, and here we are. Like, like you said. Yeah. Considering this dude. And you know what's the crazy part? Is similar to the way Donald Trump ran. People are going, like, I'm all for him. <laughs> I'm all for him. Dude, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, they weren't going to say that about The Rock. Yep. Yeah, they were going uh, Have you seen Fast Nine? <laughs> that movie's fantastic. How could you replace. What's that one guy who passed away? Paul Walker. Paul Walker. Paul. How could you replace Paul Walker, but you do it with. What's this guy? Dwayne the Rock. <laughs> no, 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 no character. No character. No no character. No character. No I could. I could. I don't know what his name is. All right. Speaking. Don't speaking of politics, uh, your oh, country no. I saw of that. origin, El Salvador, accepts cryptocurrency yeah. as a legal tender. The craziest part about this whole story is that they bought twenty-one million dollars of Bitcoin the day before they made the announcement. Part of that feels like, okay, they were clearly going to do it because you don't just buy 21 million. And the other part, too, is since it happened on Tuesday that it went through, Bitcoin went from $52,000 being one Bitcoin has gone down to 45000 So it kind of took a big hit over the last week. People realize, like, okay, governments are going to start doing this. So a lot of traders are wondering if they should either pull out or buy a bunch at the moment because it's going to be more accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really no way of knowing. I do think it's interesting that in the idea of cryptocurrency, El Salvador becomes one of the first major, because it's, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's a new country. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, it's a full country. It's not yeah. like, you, you know, obviously you can kind of use it, mm -hmm. but I mean, this is like, you can go have a crypto wallet and go to the store and buy a Coke. I mean, it's, you know. Mm -hmm. The thing that about Sour that I don't know if, I don't know if you both know, but they have a very very young president. Yeah, President Bukele. Yeah, President Bukele. So he's very very young, very hip. Even the way he dresses, he dresses his hat backwards. Yeah, he, he dresses, dresses like he, he dresses how we would dress. Kind of like a Guido. Right, right. And he's and he talks to people like that. He does podcasts with. He does podcasts. You know what president goes on there and you don't see Donald Trump going on like a. Barack Obama uh, did marry. Yeah, but was he was he at the when he was president? Yes. Yeah. Well, he's he's talking to like young guys that are doing vacation vacation podcasts. Oh, he's like, doing like, like fun podcasts. Fun podcasts, not just like educational. Yeah. Like, he's doing fun. He's, going, he's probably doing multiple. He's probably doing going Obama deep, did like small ones. content creators. Yeah. Yeah. And stuff, so. yeah. 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 But he's just very like into the youth. So maybe. So is that what he's trying to do? He's like he's clearly trying to. Maybe take a shot in that way. I don't. What I had read was that he's like aiming to use like a clean way f to get remittances in the country when people send money to El Salvador okay. instead of having to use like other mechanisms. Now they have like this channel. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because mm -hmm. like they like COVID or some shit had affected their economy or something. And they needed an influx of cash or something. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I think I'm done. The uh, El Salvador was suffering for a long, long time there. They were, they were, they were having a tough time for a long, for a long time there. So they've been very happy with this president so far. Yeah. Like every, you know, all my family members are very happy. Anybody that we talked to from over there, very happy. Like it's, with, it's genuinely happy. Yeah. Genuinely, like happy that this guy was president. Damn. Genuinely happy. Yeah. Is El Salvador a pretty democratic state? I, I personally don't know that. Um, I'm impression. Oh, what, is, what, what would that even mean? Like, 
Uh, no, just because if he was whether he was elected or appointed. I mean, you know, the fact oh, that he's so yeah. liked, are people are like, okay, well, he's in there, and we do like him, or like, we like him already, we appointed him, and he's doing a good job. Okay. I, I honestly think he's just, you know, just a decent guy, which they haven't had for a, for a long time, which is the issue, because, like, they, they had major issues with the government, like, that mm -hmm. was the main reason in the 80s why my my grandparents um, immigrated from over there, because yeah. of the huge, the huge civil war that they had, yeah. um, basically the government was just, um, just they were they were trying to take over they weren't allowing it and then there was no. guerrilla warfare and they just they were taking kids from their villages killing families anybody who you know stepped in their way just the government was taking complete control and just Jesus. just anarchy there so yeah well it's good to hear that that's not the case anymore yeah make a look out of that nice supposedly something like that is happening in ghana right now and like the the dude who's taking control is like a, an American trained guy. Really? So they're installing some sort of like puppet leader over there in Ghana right just now. Just in the meantime, so that they can just do whatever they want in the background. Yeah. What was that? So they can do whatever they want in the background. Yeah, you know, like control the resources of the country. Right. You know, open it up to industry, multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Ghana supposedly has a lot of resources. Is really. Uh, has a lot of natural resources. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll have to look that. I have seen that like the dude who's getting installed as leader um, took a picture in front of the AFRICOM uh, center, which is like African Central Command for the United States. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a military operations center, and he took a picture with a bunch of like CIA agents, like. Like, like smiling, like, hey guys, we did it. <laughs> like, and like, it just got leaked all over and everybody's like, yeah, this is going on right now, by the way. Yeah, this is what's going on. Yeah. What a nice guy. <laughs> Seems like a friendly bloke. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice to know that it's not happening. On. That shit happened in yeah. Bolivia too, a few years ago. Well, during the Trump administration. Jeez. They had a, a female, like, Christian fascist uh, president who the moment she took uh, office she did an exorcism of the of the um, what essentially their she, white house what do we call she just did an exorcism um, because <laughs> <laughs> the, like first the, thing she does because the old president uh, <laughs> was an indigenous dude and they had never had an indigenous president even yeah. though it's in a mostly indigenous country like it's like mostly indigenous no. in the Minority there is white people. And so wait, they, so white, she did an exorcism of the White House? Uh, yeah, she did an exorcism of the White House because like... As in like... Because she's like, oh, you're, you're, gone. you're demon spirits that you Oh, she did do an exorcism. No, she literally did. <laughs> <laughs> she literally went into like the Oval <laughs> Office. <laughs> Oval Office and everything. And That's not bad. Yeah. We should do that every couple of years here. That's a good idea. You don't know what these guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah, just through. keep us clean, yeah. Yeah, dude, that's a just, like, all right, and now after the president's, what is it, the uh, state of... Bolivia? No, 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 what do they call when a president first gets... Oh, the state of the after, union. Yeah, sta all right, and after the state of the union address, and you see people, like, in the background, like, oh, no. We're going to have our union <laughs> purging. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are we almost done yet? All right, I'll, another five minutes. All right, got to get the old office finally. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, that was a great line. I did enjoy that line. Oh, yeah, this is my last part. I think it'd be uh, interesting to speak about why we like wine and why we like each other. Because they kind of do go <laughs> hand in hand. <laughs> yeah, this wine's really strong. That's where I actually came from. Because um, we all kind of met through the restaurant industry, which is why we're doing A, this, and B, drinking wine. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, because I, I mean, I've known, I met both of you at different times but we then became really good friends working at a restaurant together you gotta get a little bit okay there we go oh, don't be scared <laughs> no definitely definitely because i met you like fully working at geneva inn yeah and that's when we kind of met more about wine because we had a sommelier that was training there so yeah Anthony's the dude who got me into wine, personally. Same, like, same. I, I always kind of liked wine on the surface, but, mm -hmm. you know, Anthony teaching how he taught. What's his last name, Garcia? Garcia, yeah. 
Shout out to Anthony Garcia. Yep, that's right. Shout out. We'll give him a plug. <laughs> we'll put his Instagram right here. That's right. We'll, we'll tag his handle. <laughs> yeah, we'll tag his handle. Go to his restaurant wherever he's working. We'll also put that down below. Just Google him. <laughs> <laughs> Find him. Also, buy stuff from his wife. I mean, I think he has, I don't know she has like a small business or something. Oh, okay. We'll buy stuff from her wife. Cool. And yeah. Nothing but good health to her two kids. I believe they have two kids. Now. They're low-key really beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, and it doesn't get better than Asian babies. <laughs> you it's kind of like that. a cheat code. It really is. It really is. <laughs> I've never seen a bad looking Asian baby. They they are super adorable. Yeah. Right. yeah. Have you guys seen that Pixar short where like the, the baby like dumpling? Yeah. yeah. That, that is, is so weird. off-putting. <laughs> it is so weird. I think it played before The Incredibles too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, I think so. I think, I think right. it was The Incredibles too. Yeah. I remember watching that short and being like. I don't know what this is about, but the animation is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. It was like about a mom who like raised the baby, and then she was sad because then ended up leaving, and then became adults. And it kind of was meant to go in line with the story of like when we saw Incredibles to when we were adults in Incredibles two. Like parents went through that, but it's like, wouldn't it be better if we see it from the point of view of the child and not the mom? Yeah, I didn't get that. No, yeah. yeah. but that. it was about a dumpling. Damn, the recall on this motherfucker is good. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 I was so I was in my head. All I remember in my head was like the art style. And I like, remember her cutting how, chives. How adorable. Yeah, I remember just being weird. Then being like, in the kitchen. She did a scene where she was doing like this to, to like God, form damn. it. This guy has really good memory. I was really so confused. Well, when you're shocked and traumatized <laughs> by this certain <laughs> Pixar short, I'm like, okay, I guess this is what's going on. And then Incredibles 2, sir, and you're like, Okay, Monty Mole, whatever the fuck this guy's name is, is on the screen. Which, which wasn't that great, but... No. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, no, we did meet working at a restaurant, and we did enjoy... Yeah, yeah that's probably why they fucking they fired out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they were, were pretty fucking, like... They the were like money we were throwing out the window. They were like that old man in Jurassic Park. Like, we will spare no expense. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, there was, I remember going downstairs and counting, like, I think it was 11 bottles of Southern Comfort, and I went back upstairs and I asked the manager, I think it was Anthony, yeah, because he was a bar manager, and I remember asking him, like, hey, do, do, do you want me to bring up any Southern Comfort from downstairs to put on the rail, or to put on, like, the back, and he's like, we don't even use Southern Comfort. I'm like, well, that's great, because we have 11 fucking bottles downstairs that are collecting dust. Might as well use it. Yeah, yeah do we want to use it for old fashions? He's like, no, we're not using that. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> I'm right. sorry. That. Yeah. It's better with age, I guess. Yeah, yeah, people do say it about something comfort. It tastes better once you crack it open, you know, let it air out. <laughs> <laughs> let it breathe a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that's when you get some character. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like the people that drink it, you want it to really... You know, breathe and, and get some years on it. Like a good Louis the Thirteenth. Like a good exactly, right. which we also had. We also had a bottle of Louis the Thirteenth, which I'm I'm kind of upset now in hindsight that not one. So it's you know like took a little seat. <laughs> <laughs> I would have stuck a straw in there. I definitely would. Yeah, there was, there was especially once we had. I don't want to. Yeah, open it up. <laughs> why did I not just put a straw and like kind of looked around? I was like. It's not that good. Yeah, you know, like why did I do that? Yeah. And I used to I used to leave that place, especially towards the end of before I left. I used to leave that place like pretty fired up because I <laughs> live like five minutes away. So I would drink with him. He'd like pour Dude. me a cocktail or two, but he would make them like five. Dude. We'll beat this. We'll bleep his name out. He knows who he is. <laughs> he knows he is. Dude, but he would ooh, he would yeah, he was, he told me an impressive story when I first met him working because he was a bartender at a very small restaurant. Ever, and the bar gets action, but it gets like server action. Yeah, like he would have to make cocktails for us. He'd have to like pour wine, open bottles of wine. I remember one story he told me. He's like, you know, I, I kind of have a rule that whenever I'll pick a table who's drinking, and I'll like I'll try to match them each round. Oh, like, no. what if it's a twelve? He's like, I'll just match them. He's like, if they get seven rounds, I'll drink seven drinks. In the span of like four hours, which is like fine, but if, if then you're like, "Here we go to the bar later," it's like, <laughs> I'm like oh, maybe <laughs> I can't be able to guess. 
Ooh. So yeah, I, always, I remember leaving a couple times and being like, all right, I'm so glad that my drive is around the corner and then around the corner. Yeah. It was a little rough sometimes, but. <laughs> Dude, like Jimmy was always hot with the fuzz. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, how have I not? It right. sounds awful, but like, how did I not get just DUI, DUI after DUI? Right. There was times where like, <laughs> there was times where I was like leaving the bar downtown where I'm like, am I okay? Like, like, <laughs> like, uh, like just not even like to drive, but in the head. <laughs> like, like, why am I making these decisions? But, why am I the way there? But, but that's the guy that made you guys uh, get into wine? Yeah, Anthony really got us into wine. Yeah, because like I said, he would literally open like yeah. $50 I, bottle of wines every shit. And those every little night. wine sessions that we had with those $50 are kind of what got me into it. What, same here. Because like we would just sit around and look at the color. Like, he would have us compare ex- taste. He would pick on people yeah. and he'd be like, describe this wine. Yeah. And you'd have an idiot who'd be like, mm. and that idiot's name was Luis. <laughs> well, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you try to smell it, and he's like, yeah, he, he taught Ooh, that, like, it, it was spicy. Red. Yeah. Yeah, he would kind of teach, like, it goes from, like, top to bottom. Like, you want to eye it, you want to smell it, you want it to, you know, taste ever the whole thing. So I'm like, all right, well, that's right. Like, yeah. he always talked about look at the outside color on yeah. the, like, like you'd have you like hold it against a piece of paper yeah, look at the color mm-hmm. kind of like on the outside mm-hmm. and look at the color on the inside dark like, blue inside yeah or white on the outside and then just start look at the off. legs look at the legs mm-hmm. the legs being like you know like what the wine is dripping things. after you spin but then you know do your full right. Because have you seen the movie Star Wars? Like, like drink. Dry. <laughs> it's like a Daniel Bond extension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's laughs> <so much. laughs> but that, yeah, that's how. I, no, I'd be hooked. I'd be hooked off that too. Yeah, and I was only like, I well, we both were. We're only 21, 22, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. we're tasting wines that like I have no right to taste. We really didn't, right. to be honest. Yeah. That's about be, the age I think I, I started drinking. And a he'd be wine like, too. "Hey, like, let's try this Albarino," and I'm like, "This what now? This Albino? This what? Well, well, <laughs> would you just call me?" <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, you would taste these like crazy wines and had no idea how to like even explain it to people. Yeah. And you'd have people that were complaining about their overcooked steak, and you're like, well, I'm glad I spent my fucking pre shift drinking, because I'm Now I need to explain to them why their steak is taking 45 minutes, and why when it came out, it was overcooked. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, it's, you mm-hmm. get the best of both worlds. <laughs> that was an interesting place. Yeah. It was an interesting place to work. But that's, that's when you and I really met and, and connected, and yeah. I think I, formed a pretty good friendship. Mm-hmm. When we... Did we... Both start there at the same time, or who started first? So you were there when they were doing the reopening. Yes, and you like, because you, you guys did like a whole window of yeah. operation. Yeah, like it was from the beginning. You guys were yeah. trained, and you were under a different right. cook, and a, a, the two Shut. main managers being had yes. a lot of input. And yes. so. I came because of another a mutual friend of all three of us, which is Eduardo, who was also the Eduardo's the one that got you in? Yeah, because I remember yeah, I, wanted, no. I wanted to leave my current job at the time really badly yeah. because I was very miserable. Because everybody I had worked with that I then become really good friends with had left. So I was like the last Mohican. <laughs> like, you know, everybody that I had started with within the course of a year had left. <laughs> I mean, you know, I felt like, uh, I felt like, yeah, I felt like Russell Westbrook, you know, essentially. I felt like Russell All Westbrook. Was in the thunder. <laughs> yeah, I was the last one. Like, what am I doing here? <laughs> I could get into the all-star team, but is that all I want? You know, it was kind of like that. <laughs> so I was, so I was like, all right, I want to leave. And the manager had just come in, really didn't know what he was doing. He had, no, he had no backbone. So then uh, Eduardo was like, hey, you should come and work at this new place that I'm working at. And I was like, oh, like, is it pretty expensive? It's pretty nice. He's like, dude, appetizers are like 20 bucks, blah, blah, blah. And then when I got hired, they had slashed the prices <laughs> by like 10, 15 percent. So how long was it until you guys both came to cafe? So that was a year later. A year later. So we were at for a full year full time only. Yeah. There. 
and then we well you actually you were like hey we should start to find other places and we spent a day literally driving around do you remember that we spent yeah. a day driving around applying at a simple um, chucks the abbey and uh both harpoons and cafe mm -hmm. and you ended up getting the phone call at cafe before i did you were like yeah i just got hired at cafe we're playing pool at my place one time and so i was like oh shit you're like you should call and see what's going on because it's been a week since we applied so i ended up calling and talking to mm -hmm. and zach was like yeah i did try to call you and it must have gone a voicemail or something but yeah you should come in for an interview so then i did come for an interview and then we ended up starting pretty much around the same time yeah. i think you had a couple of days ahead of me because you got your interview before me but mm -hmm. oh man what a ride man yeah we went from yeah then to then i remember leaving janelle because like that one we left like, pretty bad terms yeah well wait you know, i mean what'd you say I remember that one like chick manager who came in with a stick up her ass, and I was like, "I'm not gonna fucking deal with you." Like, is, that, no, is that because that's a woman? Is that because it's no, a not we had mostly <laughs> real managers. <laughs> <laughs> we almost always had female managers. Why, so, why do you think that is? No, she was just like some. Yeah, she was like this hefty, like husky. Oh, I never worked with her. Like, I know who you're talking lady. about, but I never worked with her. And she was just such a fucking. Because this is when you and I were both kind of like in trans. We were already working at cafe, yeah. and we were the last on the last mm -hmm. edge. Yeah, you were already out. I think you had to like bounce sooner than I. I I did bounce sooner than you. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I was like fully in cafe. That's a good decision you guys made. Yeah. yeah. Was I mean? No, honestly, they were switching man They switched managers yeah. and chefs like two or three times. So then we were there for think about it. We were there for a year, and then switched. It was very yeah. They had switched entirely new staff from the top to bottom. Yeah. It was like new chef, new manager, and it was just insane. Yeah. But, you know, I did learn a lot working there, but I also learned the most important thing, which was if you don't like a job, you should find new one. Yeah, <laughs> there's a ton of others. Yeah. Right. Of and, others. Yeah, which is like, I think once you know that, it's like if you really don't like a job, there is a million other jobs. Right. Right. Like you're better off fucking being the fry guy at mcdonald's than being miserable yeah mm -hmm. so that but yeah then once we got to cafe then it was like it was almost like and it sounds weird saying it but it was almost like high school again yeah, yeah. it was like nice. first day of high school because everybody there was so young mm -hmm. yeah right we're, we're all like, very, we're first all very close there like and we became closer i've time. been yeah and i've been there since i was I was 18. When I mean, I was they have like, all three of us worked together. So Dude, we, were together. Still talking. we had a chill ass gang at fucking yeah. no. That first year, those first like three that's first summer, bro. Those first three months were fun, but after that, it was like that. Like summer was fucking magical, bro. Because every day was a shit show, so you had to just bond. Yeah, <laughs> trauma bonding, baby. <laughs> every, I, the funniest story to this day that I can think about of working at a restaurant to this day was Phil Corral walking in. <laughs> but it, I'd ask him. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so he, <laughs> so the, the way that the rooms were set up was there was a uh, private dining room next to the main restaurant. But you could access the private dining room from outside essentially. Like you walked up in the, uh, an exterior door. Mm -hmm. You could either walk through the main entrance or you could go to the private dining room. And this was intended for like uh Essentially, it was business their groups, right, business groups, groups so they could have their own shit. And so I was in there just sitting down by myself, and it was 8 a.m., no fill. No call, no show. We didn't know where he was. He was, like, the only bus around duty. We're like, so we, he's probably not coming in, right? An hour and a half goes by. I'm in that private dining room by myself, folding napkins. Just, it's it's empty. We're not doing shit. And the door busts open. It closes behind him. He doesn't even look to his left where I'm at. He just turns to right where there's a counter, really similar to this, with a sink and a couple of drawers. He turns the sink on and he, let, he puts his head under it, lets it run for like five minutes. <laughs> no. For like five minutes. <laughs> that long? And I didn't even say anything to him because I'm like, okay, clearly he's not okay. He must be hungover. He must be like feeling sick. And then finally turns around. If, Full apron, full dress shirt, name tag on his <laughs> on his shirt. Looking good. I mean, everything was good except him. <laughs> like he was confident enough to get dressed. And he's soaking wet. I mean, soaking. He just ran the fucking water underneath himself for five minutes. And he makes eye contact with me. 
and the lights were on, but no one was fucking home. I mean, he was operating a pure <laughs> mechanical muscle movement. Like, he knew how to drive, he knew how to walk, but that was about it. So he looks at me, and he's like, oh, man, I didn't even see you. I'm just like, yeah, um, what's up, man? He's like, oh, dude, I dropped a bunch of acid last night. I'm still feeling it. And I'm like, okay. And then he just walked in and proceeded to bust like nothing happened. Good for him. Just started picking up plates, <laughs> dancing on the dining room. <laughs> it was just, I had so much fun while he was busting. It was just. That's great. Good for and him. he would tell me about like things that he would say at tables. Like, <laughs> when, he, when he would pour water. <laughs> he would, he would be like, baby, boom, boom. Baby, bow. <laughs> 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 yeah. no, and, and he's just like like a funny funny like <laughs> it's impossible not to laugh when you're around yeah. it like he could be completely serious yeah. tell a serious story and you're like dude is this <laughs> is this real it, it was just impossible not to laugh around him that's hilarious he finished like proing you do like a spin yeah hey <laughs> 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 Say things like, hey, don't worry, the water's on me. <laughs> Which is like such like a like a sad joke. Yeah, yeah. it's just like a dad, a silly joke. And he would I was like, oh do people laugh? He's like, most of the time they don't. <laughs> but the fact that he would continue to do it every table. I mean it was just great. And dude, he was oh man. This guy's just living life, just just enjoying yeah. life. Like yeah. no matter what situation, yeah. you know that guy's having a good time. Yeah, no, he was. That guy could be picking up dog poop at the park all day and just having a great time <laughs> yeah. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you were like dance, like because we'd have music blasting in there. Yeah, because it'd be us who would control it, and he would just like walk around the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's was, awesome. yeah, it was an interesting working there. That's awesome. And then once we got to cafe, it was like also interesting. Weird. But interesting and like over crazy busy, yeah. and we were making good money. But yeah. at the same time, yeah. I was like, it was. I, I thought it was a fun crew when you first got. Yeah, it was yeah. just a cool. It was just a cool group to be. It around. was a good yeah. group. It was. It was also fun to simply like. And like it was so organized. I, I, it was completely different to <laughs> what we did. For real, dude. Yeah. Group, like kept that shit running. Like, yeah. who? That thing was like a ship, bro. Like. It was the uh, side work, every chart. And yeah, that was like, the first time I've ever seen that happen. Yeah, yeah. where like you'd come in and you, you knew what you were supposed you to do. You knew your side work. You knew who else was doing yeah. their side work. Mm -hmm. So and if anything was down, you knew who to blame or who to go after. Right? And you didn't feel like it could be 10, 12 servers in there or five, and it would still run the same. You know, like, yeah, like, smooth, clean. Side no, work it was done. yeah. Working there that first year was like oh shit, and like. It was the first time I saw a restaurant do like 500 people in the night. Yeah. And I think the cool thing was just like all of, all of us had like a personality. Like right. it wasn't like yeah. anyone that would they didn't have like yeah. a uniqueness to them. Right. Like it was yeah. like solid people. And it's just, almost like that kind of came out of you. Yeah. Like it was no, there was no choice but to be like extro the show with you. extroverted. Because yeah. if you were just like a person that came in with your headphones on and was like, I'm doing my side work, I'm going to... First of all, you got picked off. Yeah, you were second, <laughs> second <laughs> of all, nobody wanted to work next right, to you. Right, yeah. Everybody's like, fuck that guy. Yeah. We're just going to make his life miserable. <laughs> and we didn't have anybody I, like that, thankfully, but... I think one of the funniest people we we did work there with when we were all there was was uh, was funny. And I think I think one of the funniest stories I had was actually with Juan and him talking. Oh, oh yeah, what oh, happened, brother? To this day, I can't I can't ever forget it because I remember I started laughing so hard. I don't know the conversation. Dude, or I don't what we were talking, talking about. It was like China or some shit. We were talking about something. China or something. But you guys really... were just going back and forth, and I'm talking, and you know, you're you're you. But like, there's like this big buff guy that like, you know, he you looks know. like a fucking walking like whiskey barrel. Right? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. He's like five seven, but he walks around. He's like, like five seven, two hundred forty pounds. Yeah, like, yeah. No. thick as all hell. Right, definitely. We were talking about because the conversation originally started with myself, and we were talking about like who did you vote for, and then mm -hmm. we kind of made our way towards the dining room, and he was already fired up, um, talking about his point of view and then you started talking to him about like well china and america and to this day i can't ever forget that you said you know i hate to break it to you 
but America isn't the superpower it once was. <laughs> but just just the context and the situation that just happened, just yeah. like just like it was back and forth, back and forth, and then all of a sudden it's just like I hate to break it to you, <laughs> like, I hate to tell you that you're wrong without telling you that you're, you're absolutely fucking wrong. No, it was, yeah. <laughs> that was really interesting. Yeah. No, I remember I had like a similar like interaction with her with something like that. Uh, something like that yeah. but it was like way more chill i would say rather. she was like i'm very what the yeah not <laughs> but it was just she was just talking about how like police and people just gotta listen and basically you know you know the talking points yeah like well they would just listen they wouldn't shoot them and shit like that and it, and i just like brought up like but like I don't know, it kind of feels like all these other wealthy countries don't shoot their citizens right. at the same rates that we do. Like, right, yeah. And as a citizen of a supposedly wealthy country, I would kind of like that safety from police officers. Yeah. Because <laughs> it doesn't feel like a giant ask. That's, no. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with, like, division, man. Like, how we're just a big melting pot. Like, I feel like other countries... We're a big melting pot in, like, 20% like, of yeah. the land and, I feel and like, everything else. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But I just feel like other countries are united. You know, they're like proud to be like, "Hey, I'm French." You know what I mean? But like yeah. Americans, like some of us are proud, and some of us are just not. Some of us are like, nah, homie. That's uh, like, have you ever seen? Do you know anything about French fucking protest culture? Nothing. They'll protest at like the slightest tax increase. <laughs> <laughs> no, they really but, but, will. But they're probably still proud to be French. You know what I mean? They're not. But like, like they're, they're, not... they are like, what? Fucking Fox News pretends liberals in America are like yeah. the French are really like that. Like they had the yellow vest movement like a, two years ago because uh, President Macron tried to increase a gas tax for like five percent or some yeah. shit like that. The whole country shut down. Like and there was like uh, <laughs> yeah, people yeah. on the streets rioting and wearing like uh, construction vests. Yeah. Like and that shit happens almost every five to ten years. Like and. Like, there's, I don't know, like, Canada is also, like, I don't know, I, I don't think that... So let me ask you this, then, yeah. why, then, why, then why is it so bad here? I mean, what do you mean it's so bad? Well, you, you, you said, like, you want to feel safe when a cop comes up to you, you know what I mean? Why do you oh, think, I, why would, do you, I would think that that's probably our, our pretty chill, our, like, relaxed gun laws. You think uh, it's because of it's due specifically to gun laws? I mean, yeah, like they kind of have to feel like everybody's fucking armed, so they have to treat everyone yeah. like a fucking like killer, if like you, essentially. Yeah. Versus like in other places where not everybody is mm -hmm. as armed as they right. are. Like, and if they are, it's like super, they have, super legal. Like a bunch of these wealthy countries um, have most of their police forces aren't even armed. They walk around without pistols, like because. They're not like we've seen people with fucking guns on them. Yeah. Like, so why, why does America have so many? I couldn't tell you. Like from the beginning, like, like we well, what's, were. What's the people that have them? What's their what's their? From the beginning, like there's like been this fetishization, like wild west, like macho kind of culture. Well, it's also the idea that's kind of come with guns. I, I think it's a. I mean, not that I know, and but like I feel like what I've heard people say is that it's because they they want to feel like they want to feel safe from the government itself. Yeah, you know what I mean, and like I, they think that that's that's well, an they issue. Wanna, yeah, they want to trust. Yeah, but I mean, they, like, they, I they, clearly trust the they clearly don't trust the government because they, yeah. they feel like hey, if something shit hits the fan, like I need to be able to protect myself. You know what I mean? Like, which is what happened in the period. I mean, that's what happened in the revolution. Is we wanted the protection, which is you know the American Civil or not the Revolutionary War is like they wanted to overthrow the British government and they wanted to keep that in place. In case it ever happened again, do you, do you think having gun having people have so having so many guns helps helps the USA be so powerful? Uh, it's, it's I mean, because do you think that that sticks into so in other countries' mind to attack us? Be like, hey, no. they, have, they have military, but like, there's also a guy. There's also probably nah. all these people with guns, Billions. civilians, <laughs> civilians that have that all have guns and pistols. Nah, we got two oceans and two continents uh, above us and below us that that do all that defending for us. Like, we literally have two oceans as our borders, the Atlantic saying. and the Pacific, yeah. and Canada and Mexico and Central America are below us. Like, those are our borders, those are all, like, extremely close allies. Like, yeah. It, there's just, we would see everything coming from, like, there's just idea that, like, 
is kind of as a protection. I don't really think it's a protection from other countries. I think if anything, it can kind of be a protection, like from, like authoritarian or fascistic governments, because like that's kind of like what the um, black Southerners used it like mm -hmm. when uh, sheriffs would work with the KKK in the South. Um, black Southerners had rifles and they would like in every house, right? And they would no. just. Um, be from their porch and be like, get the fuck away from me. Like, you guys have your guns, we have ours. Like, leave us alone sort of shit. Yeah. So, like, like your um, example of the, like, the government kind of, like, it's almost like a protection from the government rather yeah. than, like, a protection from other governments. Mm -hmm. But that kind of comes with, like, the reality that, like, yeah, you're probably right. And, like, those examples are all true. Like, that did happen in the very recent past, right? Like, because the civil rights era really wasn't that long ago. It was, like, one generation no, ago, yeah. really, if you think about it. Like, during our grandparents' childhood, like, right. essentially. Um, like, yeah, well, that those sort of stories did happen. We also had to live with the reality that, like, we're kind of exchanging the safety of a lot of citizens who interact with police for that, right? And, like, yeah. that's just an exchange that we're making, and, like, the media doesn't really like, grapple with it so much. It's just like you just hear the other side of the story, like we were talking yeah. about. Like, mm -hmm. like we don't hear oh, but yeah, we, we do die from like crazy rates of gun violence. Like, yeah, there's like good sides to it. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna deny it. Like, like the Fred Hampton in Chicago, they were fucking socialists who were starting like their own little mutual aid uh, programs all over Chicago. And they ended up in a gun battle with the FBI. Like, it's true, but I mean, that also means that when I get stopped by a cop, he's gonna like, he's he might from Andrew Castillo yeah. my ass, you know? Like, he right. might be on the offensive. Yeah, like, like, oh, by the way, officer, I like to hunt. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I get your point. I get like, your point because I, I feel it. Do you know what I mean? I feel it when I'm with a cop, and I. Like, you know, I feel the, the, the tension. I feel the tension. Yeah. I feel the judgment. I yeah. feel the, the yeah, just just the energy is not right. Yeah, and, and like there's I, just a I, tension I, in the air where they're yeah. like trained to like see you as uh, borderline enemy. You yeah. could be, uh, yeah, you know the the bad. Like you, the, everybody you see can be Jeffrey Dahmer. Like that's basically what they fucking yeah. train them. Like you know, which is you know important to train people. Like all right, everybody could be the enemy. Yeah, but I think they also need the other side of training of like. Hey, not everyone might be, you know, which is like, would you rather have a bunch of defensive people or? Yeah. So what do you do to fix that? I don't think there is a fix. I think you either give everybody a gun or you just take them all the way. <laughs> I mean, right. that's, not the, that's not the only reason you find someone threatening. No, but. There's, there's other things There's involved. some people that are immediately. There's involved. race involved. Yeah. There's yeah. gender involved. There's, there's a ton of things right. involved. Yeah. It's, not, it's not just that he could potentially have a gun. That's just like I would say a magnifying factor, you know, yeah. something that escalates everything by right. like one or two. No, no, I agree. Yeah. All right, well, we'll end it on that. What's up? You gotta hit that red button. <laughs>